you want me. You know you need me. Buy me, buy me now. Um, no, don't buy me. Matter of fact, don't buy anything on this list because it is pure crap and you will waste your money. Let's get into it. Arctic Air and all of these types of mini portable ACs that you see listed online and on TV, trust me 1000%, they are all absolute scams. They do not work at all. Save your money by all means. Uh, basically what these small little, uh, and I'm using this word in quotes, these small air conditioners do, they are essentially small swamp coolers. And if anyone doesn't know what a swamp cooler is, it is basically a, an igloo type of cooler and you would fill it with ice and then you would rig up a fan to the top of that with a pipe or a hose. And then once you turn that fan on, it would suck all of the cold air out of that cooler and blow it onto you or into a room. So swamp coolers do work. However, they only work in non-humid environments. Again, non-humid environments. That's not the case for most of us. We are car camping and stealth camping in places that do have some type of humidity. Also, another problem with swamp coolers, even if they do work, and they do, uh, even if they do work, obviously that ice is going to melt at some point, be it a couple of hours, whatever it is. And you have to constantly replace that ice to keep cool. So that is a major problem with swamp coolers. And again, these Arctic air air conditioners are basically mini swamp coolers. So they do not work at all. Uh, even if you placed it on a desk, like in an office, and you were literally a foot or two in front of it, it might cool you off maybe two or three degrees. And again, that's with the water being cold or the ice being cold or whatever other element you have to put inside. Do not, under any means whatsoever, in any way, shape, or form, buy any type of portable uh, solar-powered window fan or window vent that fits over the, the window in your car. They are trash. They are junk. Uh, they are completely, hideously bad, and you will waste your money. Uh, I've had many friends that have tried them. They told me the same thing. They suck. Uh, just for shits and giggles, just to see if these things would work even a little bit, I got one last year. Complete waste of money. Uh, these things are solar powered, number one, so they don't work when it's cloudy or anything like that. And even when it is sunny and they do work, they do not work well at all. They are just horrible, horrible, horrible. 12 volt thermoelectric coolers take a hard pass on them. Do not buy under any circumstances. And here's why. Thermoelectric coolers, actually, actually, these do work. Uh, but the problem with them is they only reduce the temperature of whatever you put inside by, let's say, 15 to 20, maybe 25 degrees of the outside ambient air temperature. So that means if you are in a place that's, let's say, 95 degrees today and you have your food inside the thermoelectric refrigerator, the food is only going to be chilled to 70 degrees. And you might be saying, well, hey, that's not so bad. What if it's 70 or 80 degrees? It's going to be cool 20 or 25 degrees lower than that. That is correct. But remember, uh, most places in the summer, you're going to have huge, huge problems with th thermoelectric fridges just because when it gets very, very hot, it's not going to keep your food as cold as you want it to. Plus, plus another bigger problem is these thermoelectric coolers or chillers, they require a 12 volt plug to be powered. That means you have to plug it into your 12 volt port in your car or a jackery or another type of power station. And the problem with that is you have to use power. So long story short, if you have to plug this into a 12 volt port or into a power station, why not just buy an actual real 12 volt refrigerator instead, which can cool foods down to 10, 15, 20 degrees. Uh, they are much better. 
Uh, they're not that much more expensive. They might be maybe 30, 40 bucks more expensive, but you will have an actual real refrigerator or you could even set it to be a freezer if you want. So these thermoelectric coolers, again, they do work, but uh, they only lower the temperature a certain amount uh, lower than the ambient outside air temperature, which is strike number one. And then when you consider that you have to plug this in to be charged anyway, duh, why wouldn't you just get an actual real refrigerator for a little bit more money? These thermoelectric coolers, they basically cost anywhere from, let's say, 60 to 90 bucks. You can get an actual real 12 volt refrigerator, a smaller one, for anywhere from, let's say, 100 bucks to 130, 140 bucks. So don't waste your money on thermoelectric coolers and fridges. They do work, but not that great compared to an actual. 12 volt fridge and if you have to plug something in anyway just get a regular 12 volt refrigerator you will be much much better off cargo nets for the interior roof of your car sound like a great idea and they actually kind of sort of do work uh, that's not necessarily the problem with the the big problem is they sag yes they sag uh, so that means once you have all of your stuff in there and this cargo net starts to sag you are going to have reduced visibility in your rear view mirror when driving so you might not be able to see outside uh, of your back window when you are driving or it might be partially obstructed so that is major problem number one when it comes to interior cargo nets for the roof of your car problem number two is that once you install these and you put everything inside uh, it can be very very challenging very tough to get everything because everything is kind of jammed and crammed in there and it's just, it becomes a hot mess. Wi-Fi signal boosters for your car. Here's the thing. Here's another product that kind of, sort of does work depending upon which ones you get. And, you know, all of that, generally it's the more expensive ones. Could be multiple hundreds of dollars that generally work the best. So that's kind of strike number one to me. But more importantly, for the vast majority of nomads out there, we simply do not need any type of, uh, you know, Wi-Fi cell signal booster. Uh, unless you're going to be living like way out on BLM land in the desert or in the mountains or some type of area or terrain like that, these are, for all intents, uh, intensive purposes, to me, these are pretty much a waste of money. Uh, and then even if you do need it, uh, it can be very, very challenging to find ones that work well, that work properly, uh, you know, getting the signal to come in clear and all of that. Uh, I've had many, many friends try these and they tell me that, well, most of my friends have told me that the majority of these, we simply do not need these at all. Uh, they're not going to help that much for the average stealth camper or car camper. Uh, I don't want to say these are total crap because some of them kind of sort of do work okay. Uh, but for me, and I think for most car campers and stealth campers, uh, complete waste of money. Uh, don't spend your hard earned dough on these. Uh, it's just going to be a money hole. And uh, again, cell phone, Wi-Fi boosters, do not do it.